Hi, my name is Paige, and today I'm going to teach you how to use photos in Ed Online. The first thing you'll want to do is open up the designer to the page you'd like to work on. For accessing your photos in the designer, you will go over to the Insert Item section and click the photo icon. You'll see below it's going to display a list of all the categories you have previously created in Manage Photos. To access any of the photos in those categories, all you have to do is click on the category name to open up the library. You'll see it'll show you previews of all the photos you have in your library. To so drop down on the page, the first thing you'll need to do is click on the photo. You see you get the small little preview by your cursor icon. To drop it on the page, all you have to do is either click the left or right side. Now that it's on my page, I'll be able to manipulate it and start using it to incorporate into my design. If you need to increase or decrease the size, you'll first want to click on it to have it selected. You'll see you'll get these browning box around the side, and you can click on those dots to decrease or increase the size. You'll also be able to move it around on the page as well. Next, you may want to get some information about this photo. You'll want to head over to the Quick Menu. In this menu, you'll see there is an Info button. You can click on that to get more information about the photo, including the file name, the category it's in, and you can even see who uploaded it to the account. Once you're done looking at the photo details, you can click the X in the upper right hand corner to close the menu. Now that the photo is on the page, you may also want to edit it. On the top of the quick menu is the crop slash edit button. Click on that to open up the menu. The first part will give you the option to crop. You can move the bounding box around the photo to choose how you like to crop it. You can even increase and decrease the crop as well. Once you decide that you like the way it's cropped, hit save and the photo will load with the new edits onto the page. In the crop menu, there's also options for doing light photo editing. Click the edit tab to access it. It gives you the options to adjust brightness, contrast, and saturation. It also gives you the options of adding some photo filters, including gray and sepia tone. After you've made any edits, make sure to hit the save photo button and will automatically load it for you on the page. You may see on some of the templates in our designer, we have these drop photo icons. You can easily drop your photos into those spaces. To do so, you'll first want to go back to your photo library and click on the photo you would like to use. Then, you click on that photo, drop photo box and it will automatically load on the page for you. If you want to access some of the drop photo boxes to use on a template or other page you are working on, you can do so through the Photos button as well. You'll see at the top there is a button called Blank Photos. If you click on that button, it will open up the Blank Photo Library for you. Similarly to photos and other elements in the designer, all you have to do is click on the one you'd like to use and click on the page for it to drop onto it. You also have the option of clicking on it and choosing the Insert Photo Box button. This will automatically load one onto the page for you as well. Now that you have a photo on the page, you may want to add some other decorative elements to it. The first thing I'll show you how to do is to add a border color. First, click on the photo to have it selected. Then, we're going to go up to the top toolbar and select the border color option. Click on that icon to open up the color library. Click the color you would like to use. You'll see beside the border color icon is the border width. You can increase and decrease the size of the border color here. Once you have it to where you like, you can move on to doing some other designing. Next, I will show you how to add a drop shadow. To do so, you'll first want to have the photo selected. Then, you'll come up to the frame menu. You'll see the top option is to add a drop shadow. Click on here, and it will automatically load a nice drop shadow underneath the photo for you. You also have the option to run the corners of the photo box. To do so, you just need to come up to the frame menu, then choose Add Round Corners. And you'll see now it has more of a beveled edge. Sometimes you may need to change the fit of the photo into a frame. That will involve you going into the Advanced Photo Settings. 
First, you'll want to click on the photo, then click on the Photo Settings tab on the right side of the screen. In the Advanced Photo Settings, as long as you have the photo selected, it will give you the option to change the fit. For our example today, I'm going to change it to Manual. This will allow me on the page to change the way that the frame is around the photo. You'll see as I'm pulling it in, the photo gets moved and the, the student in front is no longer in the center. In the center of the photo is this small little hand and I can use that to recenter my image. Sometimes when you save the page, you may see a warning called fit to frame. This lets you know that the photo is not currently filling the entire frame. If you click on that warning, it will bring you to the photo that is receiving the warning in the designer. You'll see the bounding box is currently around this photo below, and you see that there is a gap between the photo and the frame. Sometimes it will be a large gap, other times it could be very minute and a little hard to see. To correct this, you'll take the side of the frame that has the gap and just pull it in closer to the photo. Then you can resave the page and it will no longer give you the warning. You'll see I have another fit to frame warning here as well for this top photo. Once the corrections have been made, the warning will no longer appear in the designer. Another warning you might see is the low DPI or low resolution warning. This means the photo you currently place in the designer is under 120 DPI. Photos under 120 DPI run the risk of printing blurry or pixelated in the designer. There are two ways you can fix this. One is to go on the page and shrink the image. If you take a small photo and make it very large, that will decrease the DPI. You'll see now when I save it, I no longer get the DPI warning. You can also check the photo's DPI by first selecting it, then coming over to the advanced photo settings. You see on the bottom, it will have a small DPI of the photo. This will let you know how the DPI currently is in the designer. As I increase it, you'll see the DPI number lowers. The other option is, if you have a low DPI photo, it's to see if the photographer who provided the photo can send you a higher resolution photograph. Thank you for joining me today and learning the basics of photos and add online.